Hi, everybody. I just want to give a little bit of uh, guidance as you work forward towards the, the literature review. I, I think that, uh, in retrospect, I think that looking at uh, chapters four and five in the Cesare Strader book, uh, the What Works Practical Guide for Teacher Research, uh, that those are probably going to be uh, most useful, uh, especially for those of you who just did the ELIT 623 research course last year. Uh, for uh, Carrie and Katie, I, I'm going to suggest that the two of you go back and look at the earlier chapters in here about forming a research question, getting the idea, and so on. Everybody might want to go back to that uh, just to browse through it and see if you've actually got a question that is a research-type question. Uh, but uh, knowing what your topic is is an easy way to get you started towards the, um, the literature review. And chapter four will really help you, and that's the head work chapter. Uh, get that idea of uh, what, a least, what a literature review is and how that uh, will inform your, your research project. Uh, one of the key things that you're working towards is that uh, when you write the literature review, you're not going to cite absolutely everything that you found. You're going to bring in the things that you've found that help you take a position on your topic and decide, here's what I and teachers like me really want to know about this topic and I want to ask a question that can best be answered by a teacher in a classroom. Uh, I'm not going to ask a question where it's like, well, if I could survey 4,000 people across the country, or uh, if I could do a, a statistical sample uh, across 15 different classrooms and find out what the most effective thing is. Uh, no, we're talking about the kinds of questions that you can answer, the how and why questions, for the kinds of kids that you work with on a regular basis. So think about the topic that you've chosen and think about the kids for whom that topic presents some clear puzzles, uh, things that people don't always know how to solve or things that people have kind of an idea of what to do but you don't know what the research is on that. Uh, so think about that, uh, that when we do research we actually do want to be solving a puzzle. And the types of research that uh, you're going to be able to collect in a classroom are think the kinds of things you already might do. So we're talking about things like observing, taking notes, uh, giving your kids surveys, uh, doing interviews, gathering together a little focus group and giving them a prompt to see what they say. Uh, I'm just going to look inside the, the legwork. Things like a research journal, things like uh, tests that you might give, assignments that you might give the kids, so uh, your own students' records. Uh, let's see what else they've got in here. Yeah, any kinds of artifacts, things that the kids have made or done that you can look at as evidence of how they've demonstrated knowledge and so on. So, uh, and you'll want to figure out, I can do those things systematically, not just sort of randomly, a little bit here, a little bit there. And as uh, they emphasize in this book, the authors do, that uh, being systematic about the gathering of the data and having more than one type of data source to corroborate what you're learning, that's what makes this research as opposed to just uh, making ideas up about what, what works and what doesn't work. So. As you're pushing towards that literature review, uh, I'm going to be asking you to start writing this position or this question uh, that's clearly this idea of what I want to know about in my topic uh, is this, and I've chosen this because it can best be learned by us as teachers uh, doing the kinds of things that can be done in one classroom or a couple of classrooms at a single school. Um, so I'll offer you some prompts. I'll make sure I put up those reading assignments to get you into chapter uh, the chapters that will help you uh, with your literature review. I do just want to remind you what we talked about in class. We talked about some of the key problems that, uh, that people run into in education. A lot of the key problems uh, are that we don't know how people actually learn and develop until we start doing some research on that. So inside of your topic, do you know how learning and development actually works? Have you found some articles that help you to understand more about your topic and how uh, kids actually grow that way? The flip side of that is always instruction. Uh, does somebody out there know what instruction looks like in, uh, in the topic that you're uh, thinking about? And that's an interesting pair to put together. Learners, 
and instruction. And the question that we often have is, is there a gap between those two? Uh, are we doing things with lear uh, uh, learners over here uh, and instruction over here, and the two aren't matching. Uh, so is the, instruction not, is the instruction not leading to learning and vice versa? Are learners having trouble with the, that type of instruction? There needs to be a good matchup between those two. Uh, the other topics that we often come back to are assessment. Uh, how do we know when kids have actually grown or made, uh, made changes? And uh, how can we mark that and measure it and so on? Uh, the other theme that is really typical in uh, watching educational settings at the classroom and individual and uh, group level is uh, motivation uh, and uh, understanding engagement and that affective side of, uh, of how kids get involved. And then, as we talked about on Saturday, transfer. Uh, so a lot of the puzzles that happen are wrapped up in those topics, learning and instruction, uh, assessment uh, and then motivation and transfer and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some of the puzzles that you have around your specific topic are uh, are wrapped up with more than one of those uh, so as you go towards your literature review start thinking about what that puzzle is that you want to solve is it aligned with one of those uh, five topics learning and development assessment instruction motivation transfer and uh, and in what ways so uh, uh, and as you start getting your research question together, you may find that some other people out there have actually done research on your idea, and that's not a problem. You don't want to just duplicate their research, though, if you find a book or an article or uh, a thesis or a dissertation where someone has asked a very similar question to yours. It's probably not exactly the same question that you're puzzling about for the kids you work with. Uh, so again, thinking about your specific school, the kinds of kids that you see, the classrooms uh, situations that you end up having because of the demographics of your school uh, and the, the numbers that you have to work with, the cohorts that you get assigned and so on. Uh, so really think about what those puzzles are that you'd like to solve inside of your topic area. Uh, from that point, uh, finding your people, finding the people who have written a lot about this is going to start to give you uh, some of your, uh, some of your uh, impetus forward and that's why we spent time in class actually starting to do that library research. So I'll post some prompts in Blackboard. I just wanted to, uh, to touch base with you this week uh, and, uh, and if you have questions uh, I'd like you to, to write to me sooner rather than later because this is a, a big project and you can't get, let it get past you. Okay, talk to you soon.